you're live, your worship. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Helmke. We are back and I apologize for the delay. Again, as I mentioned, members of council have been meeting since four o'clock, so it was nice to get a little seventh inning stretch there. Uh, we're council, we are returning to our regular agenda, 5.2, our deputations. We have Chase Quambury here. Chase, uh, it's good to have you back at our council meeting. Welcome aboard. I know you Thank have you. a presentation you'd like to make and uh, some updated information from your last presentation. So uh, right. I'll, uh, I'll turn you over to, uh, to, uh, to take over the meeting here. And I understand the clerk will be assisting you. So Mr. Quambury, awesome. go right ahead. Okay, well, just before I start, I'd really appreciate uh, another opportunity to speak to uh, officials, Mr. Mayor, and now to speak to council. So I believe the clerk will be uh, opening my presentation for me and we can begin. Okay, so this is uh, my presentation to council. There's gonna be some stuff in here that um, other people in this meeting have seen already. I've tried to update it to where we are now in the process, but a lot of the information is still relevant and council hasn't seen it, so we can begin. Uh, next slide. Okay, so my goal of uh, my presentation today, uh, the purpose of my presentation today is to outline a clear and concise justification for why Clearview Township should opt in for cannabis retail sales. Throughout this presentation, I will provide detailed information on specific ways Clearview Township will benefit from regulated retail cannabis. Next slide, thank you. Okay, so uh, here are some of the main reasons I believe Clearview Township should allow stores. For one, it would align ourselves with the 85% of municipalities in Ontario that currently allow retail sales. Um, since 2019, another, another 10 municipalities have opted in. Number two, it would provide a boost to the local economy by stopping the flow of Clearview residents being forced to leave our township lines for the purchase of legal cannabis. If the public is forced to travel outside of our community for cannabis purchases, this could lead them to stop for other essential and non-essential items while there, thus jeopardizing other local business revenue. Therefore, the reversal of this cannabis retail ban would be a huge boost for Clearview Township businesses, as it will keep residents shopping local and also draw in more tourism, money, and traffic. Uh, number three, time has now been allowed to witness the positive impact or what I believe to be the positive impact of cannabis stores in nearby communities. Cleary Township opted out almost three years ago. Uh, number four, it can limit the local cannabis black market and help eliminate our youth's ability to obtain illicit drugs. Black market cannabis sales have no regulation or age carding protocols. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'll just touch on those topics in more detail in these next slides. Uh, so aligning ourselves with the lo other local nearby municipalities and the 85% majority of local governments across the province. With 85% of municipalities in Ontario allowing legal regulated cannabis stores, this shows that in 2021 there is both public support and a nearly provincial-wide municipal backing. Locally, Collingwood residents voted overwhelmingly in support of retail stores, with 77% of respondents being in favour of legal cannabis sales. Collingwood chose to opt in originally after seeing the public approval. On the other hand, Wasega Beach chose a wait and see approach. After opting out originally, the Economic Development Department conducted a public survey. This survey also showed a strong backing from the public with 75% supporting the reversal of their 2019 decision to opt out. I strongly believe after speaking with a wide demographic of Clearview residents and members in the business community, we would see a very similar level of support. And that's why I think it's vital for our community to see a public survey conducted and public support and community engagement should be what directs the next stage of this process, in my opinion. And I have a couple links here. Um, if you'd like to click on them, they just basically show that I'm not lying to you guys about the results of the surveys that uh, Collingwood and Wasega Beach um, did with their communities. And it might be down there kind of far since I, I'm not in control of the mouse, but uh, if, if you guys want me to share this presentation with you, I'd be happy to do it, but it should be in there um, somewhere that it's it's showing the Collingwood survey. Um, one, two, three, four. It should be on the sixth paragraph down. Uh, yeah, there you go, thank you. So yeah, it just shows uh, about 1,400 residents participated with 77% showing support. So just wanted to cite my uh, sources there. 
And then below the other link is for Wasaga Beach, but uh, we don't, it, yeah, if you'd like to go in that, we can. Perfect. Uh, yeah, just uh, still on page two at the bottom there. Oh, sorry. No, that's uh, I'm, it's wrong. It's uh, just dif it's difficult reading it on the on the other screen here. Oh, there we go. Uh, might be even farther down actually. Uh, there we go. So yeah, seventy five percent. So just again, another pretty solid um, vote in favor of that. So we can move to the next slide now. Okay, so this one is the increased business in Clearview Township. Uh, as members of the community and for yourselves as elected representatives, we should focus on keeping residents and tourists spending money within our town lines instead of the financial benefits uh, bleeding into surrounding communities who have cannabis stores. If a Clearview resident or tourist is forced to visit Collingwood or Wasega Beach for legal cannabis purchases, what is to stop them from buying groceries and other goods in those same communities? With cannabis being a regular purchase for a lot of consumers, this has already become a consistent exodus of Clearview shoppers, going to other communities for access to legal cannabis. Clearview Township is growing rapidly in population. Our community will have a solid consumer base for a cannabis store, as we already do for our beer and LCBO outlets. Clearview Township and its businesses should reap the financial benefits of a new business, not a neighboring municipality. These benefits include increased local business activity by both residents and tourist traffic, future employment opportunities, and the contribution of various fees and taxes to Clearview Township. With new residential subdivisions, as well as future commercial developments planned, it is in the best interest for the town to encourage local business development instead of delaying growth and emboldening the local illicit market, which this retail ban currently does. Next slide, thank you. Okay, so this slide is um, reducing drug-related crime in our community and slowing the usage slash access to cannabis for underage residents. With residents having access to a local, safe, regulated retail cannabis store, black market sales will definitely decline, as most people prefer going to a professional, clean establishment compared to the illicit market, for example, LCBO and the beer store. This decline is shown also by federal statistics, indicating as of March 2021, legal cannabis sales have now reached 52% of all cannabis purchases in the country. Ontario's legal market now controls 40% of sales. This number is rapidly increasing as more retail cannabis stores are open to the public. By providing a regulated legal option in our community, I believe we can limit the demand for black market cannabis sales. Studies have shown that stunting the black market also has a positive effect of reducing youth cannabis usage. With strict age checking and enhanced security regulations from the Alcohol Gaming Commission of Ontario already in place, stores provide a much tougher way for youth to access cannabis versus the relative easiness of obtaining it through the black market. By not allowing, by not allowing legal cannabis sales, we are only empowering drug dealers to continue circulating illegal or illicit unregulated cannabis within our community. And I'll just say, really, it only like adults can go to another community to buy cannabis, but young teenagers who we really should be the ones focusing on them not having access, they're not going to be able to go to Collingwood or Wasaga and get it uh, in a legal store. They're still going to find that black market in Clearview Township. So since legalization in Canada, the black market has been cut in half. This is a result of increased price competition and more retail offerings for consumers thus creating a positive domino effect of reducing the black market while limiting underage cannabis use. With less uh, unre unregulated black market options being available, youth now have fewer avenues. And uh, my slide was cut off there, but I, that's enough on that slide. Um, so here's some links I've also provided. And uh, the first one is just basically showing that in New Brunswick with legalization, youth usage dropped 20%. It's not a huge drop, but it is something and it shows that um, it's not increasing the youth's usage. It's actually decreasing it because they're not having the availability that they once did. So if you'd like to click on that uh, slide or that link. Thank you. So that's uh, 
that's that. Just again, proving I'm not making things up, but uh, we can move to the next link. And this is just showing how we've gone from, you know, before legalization of cannabis, a complete 100% control black market, which is now uh, Ontario is now 40% of the legal market in 2020. And that's lo less than a lot of other provinces, but it's uh, as more retail stores are opening, that number is also increasing. So we can move to the next link. And I just I wanted to add this because it is interesting and I'm not I'm not trying to relate it exactly, but we do have a, a bit of an issue with the illegal online dispensaries in Clearview Township. And it seems like it's a an easier way to do it in a, a community that doesn't have competition with legal stores to operate a legal cannabis retailer. So I think we'd be much more be much more beneficial to not have news articles with illegal online cannabis stores in Stainer, but ones that are regulated by the government and uh, and follow follow the rules. So I, I hope we can get rid of those in this community and have regulated cannabis. So we can move to the next slide. Thank you. Um, this one I think is important as well. So time to have seen impact in nearby communities. In January 2019, when council voted to opt out of allowing cannabis sales in Clearview, I respected their decision and the major reason for doing so at that time. From comments made at the vote, it is my interpretation the main concern was not wanting to jump in too soon when we had no idea what legal retail cannabis sales would look like in our community. I believe most of us now know several stores popping up in Collingwood and recently with Sega Beach, Allenville and Angus. These businesses are modern, clean and professional. Cannabis stores are strongly regulated on their location, as well as what their logo, name, and sign can depict. For example, a store must be 150 meters away from a school or a private school. A store sign or shop window can't promote the use or exaggerate the medical benefits of cannabis in any way. These are not places where people go to congregate and smoke marijuana. It is an efficient, legal, safe way to buy cannabis, much like how Ontarians and Clearview residents have purchased alcohol from the LCBO and beer store for decades. Also, while the township does not have the power to cap the amount of stores, it does have the power to use existing land use planning rules on a municipal level and apply those rules to any new cannabis stores. Cannabis stores must be located in a commercially zoned building. Uh, next slide, thank you. So my goal and vision for legal cannabis in Clearview Township. Next slide. Um, as a 21 year old entrepreneur, uh, oh, I just got to move that link. Um, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll move past that part. Uh, it's been, it has been a very interesting process so far. It started last summer when I began looking into the feasibility of owning and operating a cannabis store. Since then, I've invested $6,000 hours of research into my business plan and have engaged both the public and local business on their feelings towards this topic. The $6,000 was for the processing of my cannabis operator license from the Alcohol Gaming Commission of Ontario. This license is awarded when the AGCO has thoroughly examined both your past as well as your financial ability to open and run a retail cannabis store. Um, and this is where on a, a very personal level too, as a Stainer resident, and I've lived in Duntroon, I've lived in Cremor, I do feel very connected to this community. Um, so for years, it has been my dream to follow in the footsteps of my family and become a successful business owner. My dad, Mike Quanbury, has run a well-established flooring installation and residential development company in Clearview Township for decades. This includes projects he built such as Huron Meadows Retirement Community in Stainer, as well as Village by the Park subdivision in the south end of Cremor. He took over from my grandparents, Doug and Liz Quanbury who had owned an interior decorating store in Stainer since 1976. My other grandfather, Jerry Emery, has also had a significant impact in our community, having owned a hydro line company. He, uh, has, he also built and managed Ashen Meadows Golf Course, which was a community staple for many years. My mom, Jennifer Knott, operated Jack's Health Food Store on the main street of Stainer for seven years. So I really have seen my family contribute in many ways to this township through business and investment. And there really is nothing more I would like to do than add on to that legacy. 
So I look forward to the opportunity of hopefully bringing um, safe legal cannabis to Clearview Township in a responsible professional manner. And my goal is to invest my future and money for the long term in Clearview Township. So next slide, thank you. Um, this is where something new that I'd like uh, to show, and this is just my outreach that I have done on my own uh, time to the community. So first steps of community engagement regarding topic of local cannabis retail in Clearview Township. This was a document brought to local businesses explaining my goals regarding opening a cannabis store in Stainer. Uh, I believe getting this large amount of support from the business community is a testament to the overall feeling of the population towards retail cannabis in Clearview Township. And if you'd like to just click on that link to show everybody what I did bring to businesses. Oh, um, actually, if I'll just share my screen. I know my internet was having some problems earlier, but it might be easier than doing the Google thing there. So let me, if you don't mind, I'll try that. Uh, share your screen. Okay, so. Uh, can you guys see that? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. So this was uh, actually, sorry, this is the support. This is the signatures that I've got. Um, just a, a long list of local businesses in here. Um, mostly Stainer, I will say. That's where I, because I do plan on opening in Stainer. So these are the, the signatures that I did receive. And this is the... Uh, this is what I brought to them to uh, so just so they would know what they were signing and, and what they were supporting. So it was a letter of support to town council for the purpose of a meeting like this um, for a proposed cannabis retail store ban reversal. I just basically go in and, and say what the letter is and it's intended to help me as the person proposing the change to be made, gain insight on the feelings of local business owners in our township towards legal retail cannabis, inform individuals on the benefits I believe will come from reversing the present retail cannabis ban, as well as explaining my vision for opening a store in Clearview Township, specifically Stainer. And just to be fair, I did um, you know, note to all of them that there is a couple challenges the planning department has raised to me. Um, and this is basically the lack of ability to cap the amount of stores in the municipality and lack of control on specific cannabis retail zoning. So that's that and I'll... Uh, hand it back over unless was my internet struggling there or or no I'll sorry I'll, I'll let you continue uh, with the slides you have them up thank you Chase can you just stop sharing your screen please? yeah there we go perfect okay so yeah next slide And I, I might I might need to actually open this one as well. Um, so this was a social media. We all know that the Clearview News and Commentary Group on Facebook is uh, a very popular way for the community to get things. I would say to council and to meetings in general. So I thought I would post on that. Um, I'll 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 screen share this as well. Okay, screen share. And uh, so this was the post that I had made on the on the Facebook chat, and uh, just basically outlining the same thing in my letter that I had presented to businesses. So there was a 230 comments. There was a lot of likes. Uh, there was people that were against it, but overwhelmingly, I would say uh, people came out in support of it. And I will try to show some of that here. My computer is just being a little weird. Okay, well, it's not not cooperating exactly, but there there was a, a lot of support in that, and uh, it is on the public the public Facebook group. I'm sure everyone's in that. They can uh, go back and see that that there was support. So I'll stop the share as well and continue on. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. So.
So uh, in summary, I would just like to say with the survey being conducted, um, I feel that this was the best avenue to take at this time. The reason I advocated to the EDAC, the Economic Development Action Committee, for the idea of a survey was because I really do believe that the residents of Clearview Township support me and the idea of retail cannabis being allowed in our community. I've seen the support from local business as well as a vocal majority through social media. Besides that though, a survey is the only way we will see the unbiased opinion of our entire population. That is important to me as a hopeful business owner as well as to you as members of council who value the feelings of residents. I look forward to this survey being put to the community and it is my hope that we see a high level of engagement from residents. I would really like to thank everyone so far in both the township administration as well as the elected officials who have allowed me to speak at now my third meeting. Um, and this is my first council meeting. As someone who is trying to do something new and change a current municipal law, it can be daunting at times, but I appreciate the openness that has been given to me and my ability to work through the municipal process so far. I plan to speak to council again at the conclusion of the survey and bring more information to you all. I do hope this brief presentation has given a solid base to begin with, and I would love to address any concerns or questions you all may have about retail cannabis in Clearview Township. So. Thank you for uh, putting up with some of those technical difficulties and I'd love to ask or answer some questions. Great, well, thank you very much, uh, Chase, again. Uh, good to see you. And there was some updated information in yes. your report from the Economic Development Committee report. So uh, I appreciate you updating that information. I will turn to, thank you. I'll turn to members of council. If there's anybody, I see Mr. McKechnie's got a card. Or the other members. Okay, go ahead, Doug. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to Chase. Uh, Chase, just a couple of questions for you. So, uh, you, you currently have a, a license uh, to sell, right? Correct. Uh, right. Okay. And how long is your license valid for? Like, so uh, that license. Oh, sorry. Yeah, when, that when license renews every two years. Uh, I don't. Thankfully, I don't have to spend the full six thousand dollars again. It's a lower fee, but every two years I have to uh, renew that license if I'd like to be in good standing. Okay. And when did you uh, take that license out? When when did you get that license? That in? that license was approved or was given to me roughly four months ago. Okay. Do you have yeah. a location yet that you uh, that you're renting or that you put money on uh, down on to to for your enterprise? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, like I've been, I've been very serious at every part of this process, and I do have um, a location in one of the new commercial developments uh, that I have uh, put a put some sort of um, lease agreement together. I won't get too much into the details of that, just for the sake of the agreement. But I do have a, a, a place that is that I have hopefully picked out, and if the law is to be changed, I'm ready to start my next process, which with the uh, AGCO. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, th those are the only questions that I have for Chase, uh, your worship. Uh, uh, he's been very patient and hopefully he can be patient a little bit longer. Thank you. For sure. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Mr. Deputy Mayor has his card up. I'm just looking. Is there anybody else? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Deneen. Go ahead, Barry. So if you were to get this approved, you said you, you're ready to start the next step with the AG AGCO. What would be your next step then? So the next step is then applying to the AGCO for my, not my operator license, which I have, but my retail store authorization. So then they go and they, you have a, I have a place lease and they come and they, first of all, they make sure that it complies with their rules, which is to be 150 meters away from a school or a private school. Uh, it has to be commercially zoned. And then from there, it's basically making sure you fit all their specific um requirements such as like security cameras uh there's a there's a pretty good list of things that they do require um you know windows that are you can't see in from there has to be um, some form of like vinyl covering on the windows and then there's a process they do as well with the community uh engagement and i think it is in or it, it is also in uh partnership somewhat with the municipality because they will go to like a 15-day public notice meeting there is i would say strict guidelines on what you know somebody can't come to them and say well i don't like people that use cannabis for example that's not something the agco will take into account but there is, there is a couple criteria that they look at which is uh if 
if for some reason they believe a store would increase the um, usage for cannabis for young kids or uh, or there's an increased risk of safety or an increased risk of crime, sorry, from that store being in a location. And it is very rare for them uh, to deny a store, of course. But uh, but that is that is the next process that I'll be in and just would be getting my store fully leased and uh, then preparing to open. Okay, I have a follow up of MA, your worship. <clears throat> so all these things you're saying you have to do, what type of dollars are you looking at to invest to to you're at a turnkey situation where you can actually well, unlock the door and be open? for it. So what what type of investment are you looking at making? It's not it's not that much. And that's what intrigues me in, in a certain way because I have ambitions for more than just cannabis retail in Clearview Township uh, in regards to business. But having a store location, a commercial um, space in Clearview is a very good thing to be getting into right now, in my opinion. And I believe in the cannabis uh, retail business whole, wholeheartedly. I think Stainer uh, needs it. I think Clearview in general needs a market. I've seen that from the people. Um, but in dollar figures, I really can't give you an exact figure, but, uh, my, but my retail store authorization is $4,000. And other than that, you know, you're not opening up a, a fast food place where you need refrigeration units hooked up. You don't need, um, uh, there's no, not certain water requirements that I need to be hooked up. It's really just cabinets with locks and a, a solid security system. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be deeply in the red to start, which is good. So, 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 but give me a ballpark idea. Are um, we talking 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 ballpark? Uh, I mean, well, you gotta put security cameras in, you got to buy cabinets, secure cabinets. You got that. I'm guessing you're looking at about 50 grand to spend to get set up. That would be my guess. That's, yeah. That has been kind of what I have looked at, you know, what, with a, a building that I I'm looking at, I still need to, you know, put the wall or put the flooring in, put a bathroom in those kind of things. But again, I'm not I'm not looking at a really high cost like opening up a restaurant to begin with. So that's that's definitely different. But it is retail, and uh, it's 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 not a really large cost. I don't believe I'm getting into to start with. So uh, as I go on, there will be increased costs as I hopefully hire people to work for me as well, um, and hopefully to expand my inventory. But inventory is going to be the largest first purchase. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor, and thank you, Chase. Uh, Councillor Deneen, and I believe, was that Councillor Patterson as well? Did I see that? Go ahead, yes, thank you, Councillor Deneen, go ahead. Hi there. Um, Hi. Just believe me, right off the bat, Chase, I'm not for or against this in any way. I just uh, don't think that um, the majority of our residents would actually even do a survey. And history shows there, um, 1,400 residents in Collingwood, 77% were for it. There's 20 over, back in 2016, there are 21,793 people in Collingwood. To get 77% of that, that uh, population would be 16,000. I know that some of those are all are under age, et cetera. You spoke of teenagers. Um, teenagers aren't, 18 and 19 are the only teenagers that are of legal age to even purchase from, your, from a store. Yes. And, and 150 meters, that's only 500 feet from a school. Um, I know we don't have any schools. Well, we do have schools near our retail areas. And 500 feet just isn't that very far from a, from a, from a school. I'm, I don't know. I, uh, I appreciate the work you've done for it, Thank but um, I just, I, I just don't see doing a survey and uh, I don't see the merits of a survey for this sort of thing. If, if, if I could just add something to that, I think a big part of the survey being um, conducted is exactly what you're saying. You know, if a survey takes place and I'm, I'm all happy, oh, 80% of the Clearview residents support it, but we have 300 people that vote on it. That is not going to be something that changes your mind. If a survey takes place and we do see a large amount of people, because I plan on, for, for good or bad, getting as many people to try to vote on this as possible and get a community discussion happening, 
I think then if we do have a lot of people vote on this survey, we will see where the community stands. So I, I totally agree with you that uh, 1,600 people in Collingwood really doesn't show you exactly uh, what the consensus is. So that that is what I hope to see is a really uh, well-involved survey. We've we've had bigger issues, Chase, in all due respect, that have had less, less feedback. And um, yeah, and I... I wish you luck with it, but Thank you. Um, I don't see it going anywhere at this point. Just okay. From... Well, well, we'll definitely see for sure. And right. I appreciate it. And I, I, I'm all on board with getting as many people to vote as possible. I want to see people really for good or bad support uh, or no support. Let's see where the community stands. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Chase. Thank, Thank you, you, Councillor Janine. Councillor Patterson, I believe you had your card up and then back to the deputy mayor. Yeah, yes, I did. Thanks, Mayor. Probably. Chase, um, we could we could spend all night uh, talking about our own preferences, cultural norms, and um, what the community um, would like and not like about cannabis itself. Uh, but I think that ship has sailed in, uh, in Canada and Ontario. And the issue that I am most interested in, and you've touched on it <clears throat> with some uh, specifics, so I appreciate that. But I, I want to tell. I want you to talk a little bit uh, to what actually distinguishes uh, the sale of cannabis from any other retail business in our commercial districts. You so on things like security and advertising, perhaps um, privacy, all those sort of things. But what 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 is it that the public will say yes or no to? Um, My, uh, other than uh, just say having a clothing store moved in or uh, another Tim Hortons. Okay, well, thank you, Tom. Go ahead, Chase. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the the computer was glitching there, so I didn't I didn't see you uh, on the screen. Uh, to answer those questions, I would say the there really is not a huge difference with a cannabis retail store with say a liquor store or, or a beer store, there, there really isn't a difference because people aren't gonna be using cannabis there. It's not a bar, uh, it's, it's a place where you're not gonna smell cannabis. You're not gonna see it. If you don't wanna see it, you're, you're not gonna be involved with that store. So that's where I would sort of differentiate it or not differentiate it from a clothing store. They're actually very similar. And it's, it's also something that, you know, if, if you wanna go to the cannabis store, you can. And if, you, if you're not in support of it, it's not going to uh, affect your life. Now, the reason that it has to be in a commercially zoned area kind of protects, I think, a lot of issues that might come up with r residential places. If there was, if you were allowed to open a cannabis store in a residential subdivision or out of your house, uh, like a cottage industry, then you would start to see some issues. So I, I feel pretty confident that when we're asking people of Clearview in a survey, do you support retail cannabis sales? That is them knowing the, the, the pros and cons of having that. And to touch on advertising, um, there, there is actually very strict laws on that. The only thing that's controversial I would say that's allowed is that you're allowed to have cannabis in your store logo. When I looked into this, I didn't think you'd even really be able to call, have cannabis in your logo. But you are, you're allowed to, if, if you want to look in calling with Sessions Cannabis, that is on their sign. And I could see maybe some people would not like to see that. Um, but you can't have anything that exaggerates it or, you know, makes you think using cannabis will uh, help your life in any way. It's not about that. It's very low key. Um, so I hope that answered. I think you had three questions and I think I answered two, but uh, I hope that helps. Well, I had one and you covered it. One was just hearing your words and how you would you see it, that it's the same or differentiate. And I, and I heard, I heard that. It is awesome. separate because I think the issue for us uh, in council is is one of positioning the store in in our uh, commercial area, uh, and and so the um, how you fit in with our uh, commercial um, areas, uh, the retailers that are there, um, the chamber that that maybe talks in general to them, and the BIA and Creamore, what what the feelings are. Those are more of the issues. A survey. But it, it goes to what a survey, uh, if it's done effectively, um, needs to do. Everyone that does a survey knows that the question is the most important, important part of, the, of the, the survey. Asking the right question, you get the right results. 
um, the issue with uh, cannabis retail is can the public through that questioning get to the heart of the question or will their concerns about cannabis as a regulated substance, um, maybe, maybe what they've always thought about cannabis, um, uh, may, maybe they're not going to actually understand what's happening here unless we, yeah. we, we yeah, scrap it out in a way. I agree. I think I think the survey should really lay out the, the pros and cons, um, including the concerns by the planning department, because that's completely valid. I wish as well that there was a, a you know a special zoning maybe for a cannabis store, but we don't have that, and um, and we we're not going to go to the province to get that change because eighty five percent of the province and municipalities don't see an issue with that. But I do think that residents and businesses should know that, and there is no cap. Uh, for example, on the amount of stores. Uh, but I think, yeah, a, a survey should really lay out the entire thing, not just do you like cannabis or do you support cannabis? It really has to touch on the actual issue affecting our municipality. And I will say as well, the, the location that I am looking at, the two stores opposite me um, have signed my letter of support for a cannabis store because they see it as an increased um, revenue stream for them with other consumers or other uh, people coming to my store, which could then lead to business for them. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Patterson. All right, Chase, uh, please remain patient. We got other questions. Councillor okay. Lambers is, uh, or sorry, Councillor, Deputy Mayor did insist his card was up. Did you want to speak again, Deputy Mayor? Uh, yes, and I'll I go did, to Councillor Lambers. Okay, go right ahead. Stand by. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. So, uh, great presentation, presentation, Chase. And of course, I, mm -hmm. I saw your presentation at the Economic Development Committee as, as well. And, and um, I don't support doing a survey. I think a survey is a waste of time. I think this council just needs to make a decision whether we're going to support cannabis or we're not going to support cannabis. And I would suggest that you know, we've done surveys before and we get 300 people, 350 people that respond. And, 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 and as Councillor Denise said, we, we've had more serious issues and we still hardly get anybody responding to this survey. So I, I, I don't think we need to do that. I think, you know, we need to, to go to staff. I'd be willing to make a recommendation. You know, for staff to come back with a, with a report with strict guidelines on how we would allow a, 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 cannabis, a retail cannabis location to open and then let them come back to us with a, a recommendation on how that would happen. And then we can either vote yes or vote no. But I think we just need to move on and make a decision about this. All right, uh, before Chase, we even try to answer that question, I'd like to point out uh, two things, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, you made the motion at the Economic Development Committee to bring it to a survey and brought that to this council table. And second, you are uh, at the table when council voted on January the 7th, 2019, uh, already on this issue. So this issue has already been, been voted on. So um, I'm just pointing out that you've already participated in this and, and I appreciate your input on that. Uh, so we're at the point right now where we have a report that council is going to be receiving or taking a look at here in a minute as another item on our agenda about the cannabis retail survey as prepared by our CAO directed to by council. So we're getting there as far as to help answer some of these questions. Um, so actually, Chase, I'd like to go right to Councillor Lamers next because he had his card up. Go ahead, Mr. Lamers. Thank you, Your Worship. It's more of a comment. Sure. Um, I have no problem with having more entrepreneurs move into the area, but I do have a problem with not being able to uh, allow op uh, opting in and not having any control on how many stores can move into the area. Like once we opt in, we have no control anymore. Oh, if I could just answer to that. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I, I agree with that. It, it is strange that they haven't given municipalities a control over that or even a provincial uh, regulation on controlling the amount of stores. But I, I just believe that they want to stomp out the black market at all costs and like you see in Collingwood, you know, all those stores, I, I support everybody who, who goes through opening a business, but they're not all going to survive. And I believe in Wasaga Beach, not all those stores will survive. And it's kind of a fight to the fight till the end or fight to the death, I think, with some of these retail stores. And the free market will play itself out. And the amount of stores that are needed for the amount of consumers or for the amount of 
traffic that we have in Clearview Township, that's what's going to control it. And I don't think you'll ever run into an issue with a landlord who has a problem with opening a cannabis store. And if he does, he'll be the one that won't lease the property to you. So I think some things, yes, the government, we need to be in control of. But on this, I don't see a huge issue with that, but I, I respect it. And um, yeah, it, it's it's strange that they don't have a cap, but that I, I do believe the free market will uh, will control how many stores we need. Mr. Lamers? Yeah, would you be able to put anything on your survey with that? Opting I, in I think and that's a good idea, yeah. Hmm. Thank Get, you. Lay, it all, lay it out to people for sure, yeah. Okay, as a part of a preamble or something. Okay, anybody else with any other comments? Did I see Mr. McKechnie? Did you have another question or comment for Mr. Quambury on his presentation? Uh, uh, no, Your Worship, not for Mr. Quambury. I'm going to wait till the recommendation uh, comes up and uh, okay. an, an amendment I'd like to put forward. All right. Okay, if I may, I've got a couple of quick comments I'd like to put in here, Mr. Quambury, and that is that, uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, this is the first time uh, since, uh, since we've been doing these live meetings that the Clearview News and Commentary page has appeared on our screen. So True. I'd like to acknowledge and congratulate you for breaching that uh, envelope and, uh, you know, pushing the, uh, the, the boundaries of what this municipality can do as a legal government organization. Uh, <laughs> to point out that the, uh, the News and Commentary page operated by uh, an individual here in Stainer is not in any way associated with Clearview Township. Uh, Very true. So I, I appreciate that it's a Facebook, group. it's a social organization and Facebook is a social media platform. It has nothing to do with the Township of Clearview. So, uh, but, I, but I do appreciate your commentary on, on the use of that page. And I'll give some yes. endorsement there and say that it does bring conversation to our community. And for that, I'm grateful. And yeah, so for, for that, I'll well. say that. So and again, anyway, thank you for pressing the boundaries and bringing that up on our unfortunately my tonight. my comments wouldn't come they wouldn't come up on my facebook there for some reason but, uh, okay. but yeah for sure that's okay um so that uh i just want to get past that now uh chase i, I really do appreciate your your uh your interest your enthusiasm your professionalism by the way i'd like to compliment you on a on a good presentation um, and I do think that uh, it, it is worth noting that uh, we do want to hear from individuals and business people that are interested in investing in business in Clearview Township, for sure. And uh, so uh, I, in no way do I think that that's a negative. I think it's fantastic that you're here. So I want to acknowledge and, and thank you for, for making that presentation. I'd like to point out that the procedure here has been consistent. We uh, asked when you first approached us, uh, about this. It was a uh, semi-private meeting that was held to, to see you know, what you wanted to do. And we suggested that you come to the Economic Development Action Committee, which you did. Uh, that committee as a full committee met, as I pointed out, the deputy mayor made the motion to bring it to council. It then came to council. Council uh, then directed through a motion to ask our CAO, who uh, actually is doing double duty on this particular issue because he's yes. our, our staff resource on the Economic Advisory Committee, as well as our CAO for the corporation. <laughs> so he's he's actually representing both of those organizations. So I thank the CAO yes. for, for preparing the, serve, or the, the report. And uh, so we need to, you know, move in this process to the report. And that gives us an opportunity as a council to discuss that as council. So... Chase, uh, if there's anything further you want to add, and then I'm going to ask you to step out and we're going to move on to the next step. No, you, you guys have had a long, a long night. I'll just say yeah. I am a big believer in the survey and I'm a big believer in hopefully see a, a large turnout. And this is the, the, the most voted on survey in Clearview Township history. And I believe it will be. I appreciate all your guys' time. And uh, hopefully at the next council meeting, we'll move forward even more. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Quambury, and have a good evening. And yep. it has been a long day already, that's for sure. Yes. Good night, guys. I'll, I'll log out here. Have a great night. Thank, thank you very much, sir. All right, Council. Uh, on our agenda, we did agree to move uh, item uh, CAO 005 up to this point in the meeting. Uh, you know, normally it would have been down in the, uh, in the rest of the agenda. Uh, when we met as a, uh, the, the, uh, the CAO and the clerk and myself, we discussed bringing this forward. And so that's why we're here. 
So at this point, I'll read it. Uh, there is an ask in item number two for a number. So because the number has not been provided, I'll read it and we can discuss it and then we'll get a number and then I'll ask for a mover and second. Madam Clerk, are you comfortable with that? All right, thank you. Recommendation be it resolved. The Council of the Chashua Clear here by one received report CAO 005-2021. It's the Retail Cannabis Survey Methods and Costs dated October 25, 2021. And item two, direct staff to issue a public survey regarding retail cannabis using option number blank as the method. And so it's on the floor. We do not have a mover and seconder. I need to discuss the blanks and then we'll ask for mover and seconder. So I'm looking for commentary or questions. Mr. McKechnie. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to make an amendment, if I may. Oh, okay. Is now the time to do that? I, I suppose, um, again, we don't have an option number, so it's officially not a motion. It's on the floor for discussion. Okay, uh, thank you. So I'd like to add an option number four, that uh, uh, the Township of Clearview hold a plebiscite during the 2002-22 municipal election to survey the residents of Clearview on the uh, question of retail cannabis. So rather than do a survey now, uh, over the next few months, just hold off until we have the, uh, the election and I'll speak to that amendment uh, when it's appropriate. Okay. Uh, yes, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Mayor Measures, for you to the rest of council. That amendment is more to be referred back to staff because that is going into a different direction rather than issuing a public survey. That's actually requesting that you place a question on the ballot for the municipal election, which I would advise that staff should be bringing a report back to council, advising of the different steps regarding that, if that's something council wishes to do. All right, well, that's good advice. Um, I haven't got a seconder yet before we even get there. Can I ask, is there's a seconder from our council? We're not seeing a seconder on the floor. Okay, there's no seconder on the floor. So good recommendation, Councillor McKechnie. Uh, no seconder though to do that for item number four. At this time then, uh, any other questions or comments about items one, two, or three? I'm looking for somebody to recommend. Tom, go ahead and then Barry. I, I, I want to. I want this council to engage a bit on this because it's kind of important. Sure. But but my, given the, if we're looking for accuracy, and actually some information that can be, actually, um, uh, be assessed and, and and inferences drawn, my experience that I had with the um, uh, the Creedmoor Medical Center when we did the phone survey, uh, provided a very detailed sense of this population and, and the, how they wanted to be served by the medical uh, services in our community. And it was uh, definitely uh, a, a real asset when we, when we used it to do the expansion of the medical center. That was done by a professional, and he's still in the business. Um, and um, if we were going to do the, the survey um, and, and really focus in on the accuracy of it and uh, develop the questions, um, which could be put, it's a voice call. And uh, so that would be my preference. I, I do, ha I have to say, honestly, I have some difficulty um, in this particular question, cannabis retail, rising to the importance of some of the other things that we have to do. H had we been successful in getting the uh, seconder from the motion to Councilor McKechnie's, a motion. I, I, I can think of, I, I can bore you with a list. I can think of 10 things I'd ask uh, for a pelvis, pelvis site on just relating to capital expenditures and tax increases due to social housing, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, small halls that I'd want to put to the public in that form if we thought that was beneficial. So um, if, we're, if we're going to do a survey at all, I hope it's accurate. My, my sense is that phone survey is probably the most accurate, but I can't get excited uh, about one, two, or three. I'm not sure how informational uh, this whole exercise is going to be in the first place. I know we made the commitment. Uh, I think I think we. It, I've always been a strong proponent of public input, 
Um, so, um, you know, I, I think um, I, I'm throw the idea right now. I just appreciate hearing from my councillors. Tom, can I ask, are you suggesting council go with option three, the phone survey? I want to feel, I want to hear if council really, really wants to get an accurate survey. If they Got do, it. if they do, I think that's the way to go. If they just want to, they, they just want to sort of uh, uh, sense where the public is because it's new to yeah. us. There's, there's things that we, we have to do. I think about ourselves, how to position retail cannabis in our economic development strategy. So I think there's more work we have to do, not just come up with a question. But if council is really strong and they really wanted good information they could rely on and to be accountable, I would go to something more professional. But, if, you know, I want to hear I want to hear what people want to say. I appreciate that. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so I'll defer back to you. We don't get any further discussion. Deputy Mayor Burton is next, then Phyllis. Go ahead, Barry. Yes, thank, thank you, Worship. Uh, so just to clarify something, first of all, is, yeah, I was the one who put forth the motion at the Economic Development Committee. But that was because that was the request that, uh, that Mr. Quanbury was asking for. That's why I put forth that motion. Um, so to get it, the whole idea was to get the whole issue in front of thing. I'm not a big fan of these surveys. I don't feel they work very well. If we have to do a survey, I would probably support electronic survey because it's the least expensive. I don't want to spend money on, on surveys that we just don't get much results out of. So I, th I think that would be the least expensive one to do would be the electronic uh, monkey survey. But again, I, you know, I, I just re reiterate, I, I, I think we should pick any of the options and, uh, and then make a separate request for staff to report back with something else. Anyways. Thank you. Councillor Janine. Oops, there you go. Yeah, there ahead. I am, yeah. Um, the phone survey might have been the better one to do, but there's too much information for a phone survey. Um, I personally, if it were me, I'd probably hang up on the person that was calling. Um, it's too big of an area for that. We've known before in bigger, well, what I considered bigger issues, the ward review, the ATV issue, all of those things were much, they, they seem to be, they seem to be, people had, had their, um, their own ideas about things. If people are interested in this, we will hear from them. Um, electronic survey, I, if we had to, that would be the only one I would go with, something that didn't cost us anything. I'm sorry, I, I can't see putting money out on this. And that's just my opinion. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Lamers. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I'm leaning towards uh, the electronic survey, but who's gonna put this survey together? Um, okay, so let's go to the CAO. John, have you got a comment on, on who may do that? We would, we would have to meet with senior management to see who we could have started, work through the process, develop something that could go out on the survey monkey, and then uh, make sure that we're able to collect the information from it. So we'd have to discuss it. Uh, we just got into really more, which is the easiest. It would be the easiest, but it doesn't give you, as you can see, they've done electronic surveys, other areas. What, I think there were 1,600 people in, in Collingwood and in some areas. So you don't get a huge number uh, but it may be considered a sample of the population, but it's still not a huge number of people responding, typically. All right, thank you. Councillor Lambers, anything further? No, that's fine, yeah. It's... Okay, Mr. McKechnie, Councillor McKechnie. Okay, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Well, since my uh, amendment got shot down, I'd, I'd like to speak to the other options. Uh, I think they're all fraught with problems. The electronic survey, the uh, mo uh, survey monkey, uh, you're going to get that uh, loaded by people that are, well, it's, it, it's going to be biased. There, there's no doubt about it. Uh, that will be biased. Uh, it may be the cheapest, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be a good survey. Probably the phone survey is the best, but I got to tell you, I don't answer the phone. When I see a number come up on my phone that I don't recognize, I don't answer it. Uh, 
you know, we we uh, we have a problem with, uh, you know, we're not just dealing with Stainer, we're dealing with all of the townships. So none of those options turn my crank at all. I think that we, uh, uh, I'll be voting against all three of them. I What I would propose is that if any member of council feels strongly about having cannabis in our community, put a motion together, put a notice of motion together, bring it to council, and let's, as a council, debate it. Let's put our big boy and big girl pants on and debate it and uh, get this over with. And uh, we don't need a survey. I think a survey is the wrong way to go. Uh, unless unless we add the survey to the municipal election. <laughs> I think that's the <laughs> way to go. But these options here are the wrong way. So, yeah. Barry, I'll give opportunity to Mr. Broderick or Mr. Walker. First, you've spoken a few times. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, anything we, uh, any type of survey is, is going to have its share of issues. Um, but uh, I would like to see a, a, a flavor of public opinion. And, and I think the electronic uh, survey would at least do that for us uh, w without accruing significant costs. Uh, that's Personally, that's what I would support. Thank you. Mr. Walker, did you have anything? Yes, go ahead. Yes, Your Worship. Um, I'm not really fond of surveys, period, either. Um, I would rather see us, uh, as, as Deputy Mayor Burton or Councillor McKechnie said, uh, if we want, let's uh, put something together here and uh, get a staff report back and move forward with it. And uh, forget about the uh, the surveys, which uh, I, I, the electronic would be all right, but it's open then to anybody and everybody to 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 uh, comment on. So that's not going to give us a true a true uh, value for for uh, what we want to do. So I suggest we move forward with uh, with another plan. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Deputy Mayor again. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to make an amendment. It's option number four, none of the above. A new no, option I, number four. Uh, yeah, make that number an option. Four. Option number four, none of the above. And then I would be happy to work with Councillor McKechnie to prepare a notice of motion yeah. for the next meeting. Yeah. We're going to go to the up. clerk here. The clerk would like to say something. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Measures for you to Deputy Mayor Burton and the rest of Council. Um, option number four would be a direct negative of the motion. So really, if you didn't want to issue a public survey, then you would vote down the motion. Whichever option you choose, you would vote it down. And then Deputy Mayor Burton, you could proceed with um, submitting your notice of motion, which I'm assuming would go to the November 8th meeting and could be voted on and discussed at the November 22nd meeting. That's, that's a fair review. Um, I have a question for the clerk, Your Worship. Sure, go ahead. Does that mean we have to vote on all three individually, vote them down, or can we, like, how do we do that? That was why I said option number four, just so we didn't have to vote on all three options individually and go, no, 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 no. Uh, through through your through your worship to Deputy Mayor Burton and the rest of the council. So what would happen is that one of the options would be cho chosen, be moved and seconded, and then when the vote would come, council would choose to either vote for that motion or vote it down, and then you could proceed forward from there. So one of the options has to be chosen to finish off the actual motion and then move from there. Yeah, if I can just jump in here again for, for anybody who's tuning in and doesn't quite capture this nuance. When a motion comes to council that is not complete, we have to complete it before we can get a mover and seconder. And so this is the problem with getting motions from uh, staff reports that have option, option, option. And so while it's okay, because staff have to give options to council, procedurally, we have to make sure the, the, the recommendation is complete. And then you can choose to support or deny or amend. So that's that's sort of the procedure that we're dealing with right now. So just want to be clear with everybody. Tom, you had your card up first. Go ahead, and then the deputy mayor. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm um, so I, I'm. I'm ruling out the telephone survey because, it's, as I thought, it's, uh, it, people just aren't interested in that level of detail. We never. We never seem to. And and, and plus, I have to say, and I don't want to diminish uh, the the good effort that uh, 
Mr. Quinberry put forward. I appreciate the, uh, um, the initiative as well. Uh, it, it, isn't, it isn't the most important thing that this council needs to consider. It's a, it's, it's a good issue, it's an important issue, but you know, to put this much effort into that and, and not to do the same kind of effort on some of the other things we do. We didn't, we didn't go to the public on a, on a referendum to say what we're gonna do with the small halls. That would be a question that I'd be most interested in hearing the public say in a, in a do or die situation. We don't yep. do it that often. So anyway, um, I wonder, first of all, I'm kind of curious as to what uh, um, a notice of motion would say. And if it's really to say, let's just get on with it and vote on it, who's gonna make the material, put the material together to vote? Like we, we need a, almost a workshop on this, or at least a discussion set aside where we actually, what is it that we're, we're working on here? What are we looking for? What's the planning? situation like I, 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 I have I, I really do have more questions on how we manage and and accommodate this in our in our, our community than I do with the public reaction to cannabis as a regulated or unregulated uh, drug. So I, I'm a little bit curious if anyone right now is thinking of putting a motion together, I would say for what and if and if it seems reasonable, then I would, uh, I would say defer the decision on a survey until we've had a discussion on what the better idea is. Okay, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, Ms. Clerk, you go right ahead and then I would like to make some comments. Please go ahead, Sasha. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, for you to Councillor Patterson and the rest of Council. Um, not knowing who would want to present a notice of motion, a notice of motion could be proposed that it directs staff to bring a report back to Council reporting on items A, B, C, D, what council wants to see in that report um, to maybe possibly uh, change their decision made back in 2019. So the notice of motion doesn't have to be a direct decision from council. It could be asking staff to bring more information back to council. I, I guess, thank you for that clarification, if I may. I guess if I was going to, in, es in essence, um, reverse a decision council has already made, with, with respect to direction to staff, I would at least want to know, uh, have a little bit of an outline of what it is we're, we're expecting um, to come in this new motion as a direction to council to come back with a report. Like what is it, what's gonna be different about it? And, and is there going to be time for us to think about what needs to be uh, considered in that motion? Because even if you got a survey, all the survey is going to give us is a public opinion on what they think of it. And then we still have work to do, I would assume, to yes. put a program. So that's, that's where I am. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. That's sort of where I was going to go with some of my comments that while uh, the recommendation that's before us uh, asked for us to do a survey and there are some costs involved and there's some advice from our CAO about the different options, pros and cons for each one. Um, regardless of what the outcome of any survey, it still would be up to council to make a decision. So if I may, I'd like to just review something, and that is that um, in, in 2018, that fall, uh, the government of Ontario announced that they would then ask the provinces or ask the 444 municipalities to make their decision about uh, having a cannabis retail operations in their communities. And they outlined all of the parameters for that. That arrived just as the election was sort of wrapping up. It became a, an election issue with three weeks to go in the election. And, uh, and then if you recall, there was an election period of about two weeks of actual voting. So nevertheless, it became a bit of an issue. And I want just to review that at that time, as I was a candidate for mayor, I was not approached by a single citizen about this issue during the campaign. I was approached by members of the, of the press. Uh, the media uh, interviewed myself and, uh, and, and my predecessor, uh, former mayor of Cruz, about those issues. But I just wanna assure you that I was not approached by any citizens about this at all. Now, once uh, we were elected and sworn in, uh, I sat with uh, Clerk Fettis in the office, along with CAO Sage, 
we had a, quite a discussion about how we would handle this, given that we were given the responsibility to make a decision by the end of, I think it was the 28th of January, we needed to provide an answer. And so we immediately looked at our council agendas, looked at what opportunities we would have to, to create a report, survey, contact the public, and uh, I suggested to Clerk Fettis that we do a public consultation, which is something that had not happened in, a, in the agenda of Clearview Township at that time. Frankly, being a new mayor, I think our clerk at the time was kind of procedurally wondering where that fit because it wasn't in our procedural bylaw. And by the way, it's still not in our procedural bylaw to hold a council meeting public consultation about any issue. So, uh, which is just as an aside, Madam Clerk, I would hope that when we review the procedural bylaw, that that's something we talk about. Nevertheless, um, it was agreed that we would do that. We promoted it, we advertised it, we did a little press release, uh, we did some radio personality interviews on it, and uh, we did obtain, if you recall, about nine or 10 people who spoke at the microphone in our in person council chambers, and all nine members of council were present at that time. And uh, we heard their public consultation and then we voted on it the following week. And, uh, or sorry, no, we voted on it that night, actually, we did. And uh, that vote went down seven to two. Just wanna point that out. Uh, and by the way, uh, just for the record, one of the, uh, let's call it the dissenting vote was uh, former councillor Ed Christie, who's not with us tonight. So nevertheless, it was eight that's one. my review. Yeah, I think that's my review of that. And I just want to point out that we did do this. And so I'd like to point out that um, as a council, we made a decision. We followed the procedures of the province of Ontario and we made that decision. And so as a result of, of uh, the energy given by Mr. Quambury in his uh, very good presentation and some public interest raised through the social media channels of Facebook, as well as the survey work that he's done by uh, asking some people and business people, the question continues to come up. And us as a council are now going to continually be asked over and over and over again, whether we're going to change our vote, change our decisions. You know, We're gonna continually be asked until such time as it, if we pass it and permit it in this community, then there's no going back because you can't remove it once it's been passed. So. There lies the problem. Uh, Mr. Quambury is right. We're approximately uh, in the 15% of uh, municipalities that did not support cannabis in our in Ontario. Um, I don't think it's that we're we're any unique situation. We're not different than a lot of other municipalities. Um, it just that it's the decision made by the elected body of this council, and it was it was duly recorded. So, anyway, I just want to point that out. Uh, so, Madam Clerk, you want to speak again? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Measures. Uh, this is just a procedural item. We are at 9.30 p.m. I didn't know if someone would like to make a motion. Oh, to my. Past 9.30. <laughs> okay, who's on the floor would like to... <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> um, I look at, yes, Councillor Broderick, Councillor Patterson. Uh, we'll move that uh, the Council... Our procedural bylaws be amended to permit us to carry on this meeting on October the 25th. Actually, I, was, I actually wasn't seconding. I was counteracting <laughs> the no from the technique. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you the second on this one, Tom. If that's good with you. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Any questions? Those in favor? Okay, I can see that. That carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, Anyway, so I hope that you understand my review there was off the top of my head, uh, but I do recall some of the details of how we got to a, uh, a public consultation period in our agenda, and we did do that. And it was uh, to be respectful to the persons that participated. There were uh, a few that were in favor of cannabis retail. Uh, most of them were opposed to cannabis retail, and council voted, as I said, in a seven to two split. And we will continue as a council to be asked this very question until such time as we change it again. So here's my commentary. Now, uh, I think we need to have a, a decision about what we're doing with our option number so I can complete the recommendation. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yes. Um, 
Exactly. I can somebody please put forth one of the numbers because I am not going to support one, two, or three. I cannot put forth the motion because you can't put forth the motion. You're not going to support. So Fair somebody problem. has to put somebody has to put forth the motion that they believe in, and then the rest of us can vote on it. But I can't put forth a motion that I'm not going to support, and you can't second a motion you're not going to support. Can I also put forward this commentary, and that is that if nobody moves or seconds it, it uh, fails anyway. So, is there somebody who'd like to put something into the uh, into the uh, option number category of the second part of this motion? Did I see Councillor Lamers? Yeah, I'll put option two in there, or option one. You going to go with option one from Councillor Lamers? I'll ask for a seconder on the option one. Thank you, Mr. Broderick. We now have a complete motion. Option number one has now been attached. So again, I'll need a mover and seconder on the entire motion. Recommendation, be it resolved, Council of Township Care hereby one, receive report CAO 005-2021 retail cannabis and direct staff to issue a public survey regarding retail cannabis using option number one as the method. Yes, ma'am, clerk. Thank you, Mayor Measures. Um, Councillor Lamers is the mover and Councillor Broderick is the seconder and they're moving the motion with option one. So it is on the floor now. Okay, but we needed the options in there. So is that correct? Mr. Lamers, Mr. Broderick? Okay, you're comfortable, thank you. Any discussion further? All right, uh, I will go to Mr. CAO. I didn't even ask you for any commentary about your report. Do you have anything you'd like to add, John? Uh, no, um, well, just to, I think your your analysis of the various surveys are are true. They're, they're, it's not a perfect system, um, but they are used in some circumstances. And we were asked to come back with three three potential options, and this is what we came back with. I appreciate that, and uh, and also your honesty in presenting the report as uh, as you did. Yes, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I can't I can't support the. Um... The, the electronic one because uh, it doesn't really unless there's uh, it doesn't have to be survey monkey it can be something else but it has to represent Clearview Township it can't it can't represent in my mind um, uh, it can't free range beyond this area like we're taking we're trying to make a decision on what's good for our community and I don't think it's right for people in the region to come in and um, and speak on this issue. Um, given we're, we're trying to act to make us make a decision for, decision for our own uh, township here the if there is uh, i'll ask the clerk or, or the cao if is there a way of of using this to identify only um uh, clear view residents good question i don't, I don't know of any my um, understanding it would be from my understanding thank you your worship from my understanding and through your worship is that uh uh, it's not something that you can guarantee. Okay, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, through you to Councillor Patterson, and just to reiterate what CEO Ferguson said, it isn't a guarantee. We can ask that one of the questions be that they add in what their postal code is, but anybody can can do the survey, and anyone can lie about their postal code if they choose to do so. But. That's not an official statement, by the way. <laughs> it's, an it's, the, it's the honor system. It's the honor system. It is the honor system for sure. Most survey work is the honor system. Um, anybody else? All right, council, you've got the motion in front of you. We've got a mover and seconder. Uh, I'm prepared to call the motion. Those in favor? Those opposed? That motion is defeated. Thank you very much. Uh, I do want to acknowledge and thank the, the staff for their work on this uh, project. Although the motion was defeated, uh, I think it was valuable input that was provided. Thank you. All right. So this is a stay tuned sort of situation. Yes, Councillor Patterson. So a procedural question. Uh, yes. Is there, is there a waiting period until uh, we have another motion that, that sort of addresses this issue because what's still before us yeah. is, is, uh, is 
this was a survey to get public input. Yep. But this doesn't say this didn't say no to cannabis retail. Correct. So now, do we? I'll tell you what. Off the top of my head, I interpret it that uh, it's not the same issue, so it's not something that we need to be deferring to our um, our uh, waiting period of six months for uh, an issue. I, I believe so. The question here was whether we were doing a survey, not whether we were answering the question. That's my interpretation, Madam Clerk. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Patterson, the rest of the council, that is correct. Um, it isn't necessarily a motion to reconsider because they are different topics. However, council has already made a decision regarding this item back in 2019. So at this moment, that decision stands. If a council member wishes to uh, make a notice of motion, um, looking for a report to come back regarding different items regarding retail cannabis, um, they can do so. But at this moment, council did make its decision in 2019 and that decision stands currently. Thank you, Councillor Patterson, any questions? Yeah, I, I wasn't considering this. The question wasn't about whether or not it be consideration of the old motion. Oh, I'm, just, okay. I'm, just, I'm just thinking, where, where do we go next? Because we, we still have the issue. Um, I don't think the issue has gone away now, uh, no. from consideration. Um, we could do nothing, I, I guess. We could do nothing and, um, but there has been some interest. I agree. Uh, expressed and the public, there are there are probably is some public waiting for an answer. And I, I think I think I think council needs to address the question. Now. Do we do we maintain that current position or do we go forward with a different position? Right, I agree. And so uh, procedurally, again, uh, as the clerk outlined, uh, the decision in 2019 remains. Um, and again, as councillors and a community, we will continually be asked about this until such time as there's a change. If there's a change, then you can't go back. Yeah, that's that's the rules of the province. So, if we, if council maintains the decision of the 2019 vote, then it'll remain. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay, it's been a long night. We have a few items yet to get to. Believe it or not, we're only moving on to page number three of our agenda. We did have a good public meeting. So now at this point, we have item number seven, which is approval of some minutes. There's several on here, and I do know there's one amendment coming, so I'm gonna read them all, and then we'll ask for the amendment on, on one item. Um, recommendation be it, so resolved. That Council of the Township Theory be hereby approved minutes of the council meetings as presented. October 4th, a regular council meeting. October 5th, a special council meeting. October 14, a special meeting. And October 18, a special meeting of council. We have a mover and seconder, and then we'll look for the amendment. Mr. Lamers, Mr. Broderick, thank you very much. Mr. McKechnie, you had mentioned to me before the meeting you had an amendment. Please bring it forth. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I would like to get my other glasses on here so I can read properly. Uh, I would like to uh, make an amendment on recommendation number one, uh, the second paragraph be changed uh, to read that the speed limit from 33, 34. Can I hold you for a minute, for a minute? It's the October 5th meeting yeah. minutes that you're speaking of. Exactly. Speaking. Sorry. I, uh, I'm sorry. The October 5th uh, meeting, uh, a special meeting. So the October 5th special meeting, recommendation number one, second paragraph be changed uh, to read that the speed limit from 33, 34 side road north to Poplar Side Road be reduced from 80 kilometers per hour to 60 kilometers per hour with the portion that is currently 50 kilometers per hour on concession six remain that way. All right. And I see Councillor Janine. Is that a seconder on the amendment? Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mayor Measures, for you to the rest of Council. Um, this could be a friendly amendment in that um, we approve the minutes as amended for the October 5th meeting because this was an error in um, reporting on the resolution because looking back at those um, that live stream of that meeting, the intent of council seemed to be that it was Poplar Side Road and not back to road. So it was an error in reporting it in the minutes. Um, so if, if you're okay with doing proceeding forward with uh, the motion that way, then we can do it. Council, it's a, it is a friendly amendment and um... One other item that the clerk didn't mention, which I do know she she and the clerk's department do have the authority to make changes uh, 
based on evidence of uh, clerical errors being made. So they do have the authority to make those type of changes already, but I do appreciate Councillor McKechnie bringing it forward. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Council, are you comfortable with it being a friendly add to the uh, uh, minutes? I got some yeses. Do I have some nods and some thumbs up? Thank you. Yeah, Madam Clerk, please record that as a friendly and we'll appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor McKechnie. So we have a mover and seconder on all the minutes and uh, good discussion. Thank you. And thank you for attending all these special meetings, Council. Uh, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries unanimous, thank you. Any business from the minutes? Seeing none, we'll move on. Communications from the mayor. Okay, so way back at four o'clock, we held an in-camera meeting. So uh, item number 9.1 is our closed session meeting report. I can report from that meeting that council has uh, agreed to uh, appoint um, as part of our uh, agenda tonight, uh, bylaw number 21-103, uh, which is an appointing uh, bylaw regarding the Nottawa Hall Board. And we'd like to welcome volunteer Adam Thornton to the Nottawa Hall Board. And uh, so council will receive a, a bylaw tonight that we will look for a mover and seconder to welcome Mr. Thornton to join the Nottawa Hall Board. It's always good to have volunteers. And so thank you for that. Uh, item number 92939495. Anybody have any questions or comments about these uh, items from communications from the mayor? Seeing none, all right. Well, they're all very good pieces of information that are uh, important to our residents and to council. Um, so at this time, then I'll call for a recommendation, be it resolved that council of the township be here hereby receive communications from the mayor for information. May I have a mover and seconder? Mr. Broderick, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And any questions? I'll call the motion, all those in favor. Yeah, that carries, thank you. All right, county reports. Uh, okay, so electric vehicles in Simcoe County fully charged for the environmental success. Uh, county hosts virtual technical study information as part of the municipal comprehensive review. Well talked about subject. And the battery collection reminder. Uh, I'd like to speak first about that, if I may. Uh, here at the township office, we do have a sort of a barrel affair uh, sitting at the, at the door here at the front door. And so if you forget to put out your batteries uh, during this week uh, in that little bag. Uh, you can just drop them off here into the barrel. There's a barrel, I guess the county will be picking it up later on. So uh, it's kind of handy to get rid of those batteries and have them properly recycled like they should be instead of going right into landfill. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, do you have any comments about communications for county reports? Oh, in the essence of time, I just wanted to remind me about the battery collection. So in the essence of time, oh, I think good. the reports speak for themselves. They certainly do. And uh, there is a lot of information and county council will be having a very lengthy day tomorrow. Uh, as we will be, we have four different items, four different meetings actually, that are all gonna be conducted tomorrow. So it'll be a long day tomorrow, Deputy Mayor. Okay, yes, Councillor Patty. Uh, just a question for uh, yourself and the deputy mayor is is the topic waste collection oh yes there's is a workshop the there's a workshop being held to discuss oh. the size of the um uh automatic cart bins uh, that discussion is scheduled for tomorrow uh, there's also a public meeting about development charges as well as the council agenda and the committee of whole agenda so yeah, I, I was just i was just hoping that it would be it had hit the council table now. So for yeah, the oh, it's, it, yeah, okay. there's a there's a it's 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 technically a workshop session, although there are some recommendations in the workshop. So I'm not sure how the uh, the clerk of the county of Simcoe handles that, Madam Clerk. I don't know if you know anything different than me, but it's kind of similar to the way that we do things here. So I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have a good meeting. All right, nothing further. Uh, recommendation be it resolved. The council of the Township Clear hereby receive the county reports for information. Mover and seconder on that motion, Mr. Broderick and Mr. Deputy Mayor. And I will call the motion, all those in favor. Thank you, that carries. All right, council, ward reports. Is any councillors? Yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Measures. And this is more an administrative and procedural request. We do have um, a consultant from RJ Burnside, Jeff Langlois here to speak oh. to um, report number PW. 
2021 for the Cremo Wastewater and Water Capacity Update. And I was wondering if we could move this ahead in the agenda so that Mr. Langlois can speak to it. I, I completely forgot that La Mr. Langlois was there. Council, with your permission, I'd like to move that item forward. Everybody nodding your head. Excellent. Mr. Ron, could you bring, come forward and bring Mr. Langlois, who's been very, very patiently waiting in the wings. Uh, and I'll read the motion and then we'll have a discussion about this. PW038-2021 Creamore Water and Wastewater Capacity Update recommendation be it resolved. Council of the Township Review hereby one received the Creamore Water Wastewater Capacity Update report for information. Moved by Councillor Patterson, seconded by Councillor Lamers. Mr. Ron, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, and I appreciate bringing this ahead. Uh, I've just been waiting patiently since 5.30. Um, so going back to 2020, you know, we, we brought to Council's attention that the Creamore Wastewater Treatment Plant wasn't operating well. Um, we had direction to proceed with some testing. It's basically uh, Jeff Langlois' uh, summary to provide us um, approximately a five-year plan. Early on in that plan, the first steps were to buy and install new membranes, which we thought would have been spring of this year. Um, it was a six month delay, possibly due to the Suez Canal blockage, but regardless, that study's been, uh, the, the cassettes have been installed. We said there'd be a three month monitoring period. That ends like last week. We've got um, developers and a couple citizens uh, awaiting the results of that study. The engineers estimated that we would probably get around 100 units of capacity if everything went according to plan. Jeff's report indicates that there's 108 units of capacity um, based on that study. And I'd like Jeff just to speak to this report. And if, if council does have any questions, so just for council's, you know, a reminder, when we started this process, um, there was no developers knocking at our door asking for capacity. So we were trying to get the plant back up to the first stage of 560 units of capacity. And that estimate was around $10 million. Now we've got some developers interested in seeking capacity. So which we're probably gonna have to go towards a stage two repair of the plant. And that number is going to be much higher, possibly double. Um, so it is important that uh, you have a good understanding of what's going on here. And Jeff's the person that uh, can explain that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Langlois. Welcome, and I apologize for the late hour of your presentation, but good to have you here, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. It's been very enlightening. Lots of issues on your table this evening. Um, I haven't prepared a slide deck or anything for this evening. I uh, was really making myself available in case there was questions related to the assessment of capacity. Um, but as Mike's noted, um, um, I guess about a year and a half ago, we started into assessing the facility uh, we did recently complete that field work with the support of Blue Sky Engineering, who was involved with the original report, most of you will recall. Um, and it's the, through their work, uh, I've summarized that in a memo to Mike, which he's, I think, referenced in his report to council, um, summarizing what we believe is the uncommitted capacity at these facilities as they stand today. Um, and the number was 108 units of residential development um, from the Creamore Wastewater Plant. Um, it also speaks to uncommitted capacity at the water supply and in the reservoir, which are a little bit higher. So the, at 147 for the supply and 298 for the reservoir. Um, so the limiting challenge right now is the Creamore Wastewater Treatment Plant. And obviously there is more interest than 108 units at the door, so to speak, <laughs> with regard to Claymore is a, is a sort of the, the second part of the problem that Mike spoke to. Um, so the, the goal here, I think, you know, as this work plan is transitioning, is the um, original approval that's in place for the wastewater plant um, allows us to go to the stage two levels without doing an environmental assessment, specific, to, you know, basically a Schedule C environmental assessment. Um, the fact, depending on the upgrades that we get into, um, there are some EA implications, particularly if land is needed, um, it can be a higher schedule as a B. Otherwise, some of them are Schedule A or pre-approved fixes. So uh, we've talked to Mike about those studies and moving forward. But um, the 
this 108 units will help uh, with some of the people who've been at the door for a little while. Um, and um, Mike could speak to the name of those development groups. Um, has taken some provision for infill um, and already approved units to establish that there's 108 to be allocated. Um, that will address basically the hydro. The basis for that is largely hydraulic, so flow. The flow will go through the plant. Um, there are organic limitations that we've spoken to before, uh, but there's more that the operations team can do to deal with those um, issues in an interim basis. You don't want to deal with it forever, but through um, hauling things to different places and, and more active management of things, you can survive even though it's just as overloaded organically. Um, but we are looking at you know interim and longer term fixes for those measures as well. So. I won't belabor it given the hour here, uh, but I'm happy to elaborate on anything to which council is curious. All right, Jeff, thank you, Mr. Langlois. Mr. Patterson, go ahead. Anybody else? Go ahead, Tom. Just, uh, thanks, Jeff. I, so, well, just one quick question in terms of uh, um, any um, arrangement uh, such as retreating from the uh, Cremor Springs Brewery. Yep. So um, that issue has, sorry, Mike, you want to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. go ahead, Jeff. Apologize. Um, apologize for my lack of decorum, I guess. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, yeah, here, I, right? I don't have 35 years of counsel like Don McNulty, who got on early, I saw with his experience. <laughs> so the um, uh, so certainly Pre-treatment is one of the options that we will consider as we move forward. And there have been some discussions um, through the developers group, as well as our own discussions that Mike and I have participated in with Cremor Springs on possibilities for pre-treating. The idea being there may be cost economy in pre-treating that high strength waste as a separate stream before you mix it in with the rest of the wastewater. But we will have to kind of look at the option of, well, if we don't, it'll cost this. And if we do, it'll cost that overall and try to come up but the one that's in the best interest of um, the ratepayers that are paying for the services. So, Mr. Patterson, anything else? Uh, well, I, 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 am I op optimistic that at least the uh, Cleanwater Springs Brewery is interested in discussing? Are they engaged? I can uh, say Mike, that one, Jeff, go ahead, Mike. Um, we've been discussing the overstrength agreement with Cleanwater Springs for over a year. Um, pre-treating at their facility is unlikely due to restraints from ministry, um, zoning bylaws and other wonderful things where you don't want to have strong smells downtown Cremor. Um, there's, there's a side stream going on. One of the developers is, is looking at outside of the box ideas. Uh, it's it's at their it's at their dime. They're they're looking at, at suggestions of, of how they could possibly get sewage capacity if there was treatment somewhere else. We're looking at that. There'll be something brought to council for consideration at budget time. Um, it won't be at the brewery. Um, we're awaiting response from a letter sent to Cremor Springs regarding the overstrength agreement, and uh, and we really just want to nail down that they're at their current capacity allowed in their, um, in their development agreement at, at their um, expanded brewery. Um, we want to ensure that when we do get closer to designing the, the, the final product or the, the sewage treatment plant, that it's designed accordingly and to, to meet everybody's needs. Um, that's a really about all I can say to that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else with any questions or comments? All right. If I can, I'd like to ask a quick question to Jeff. Uh, you mentioned about trucking and, um, you know, the ability to, um, well, collect uh, waste. And if we're not able to handle it, we are in a situation where we must bring in trucking to take it to other locations. Um, what's the... Uh, uh, you know, what, what's the capacity of our neighboring locations and what type of distance do these uh, trucks then need to carry to deposit it in another approved wastewater treatment facility? I mean, is it, um, 
is it reasonable to think that as more and more growth comes that we may in fact simply see more trucks carrying waste from our treatment plant rather than a significant investment? So there's a couple of answers. There's a several sure. questions in that one question that I'll, I'll try to address first. So um, I want to clarify that um, with this allocation, our goal is to not have additional trucking events um, associated with a high flow, right? So there's been a few times in the past years where typically in the late winter, or early spring, there's a runoff event that has resulted in trucking of untreated wastewater from the plant. So in establishing the 108 units, that's what we think um, the plant can handle without increasing the frequency of those trucking events, right? So um, the trucking that I was referring to um, is more related to trucking away uh, treated or partially treated biosolids um, right. because they're, the facility is undersized um, for the solids that it generates. And so before you get works constructed to treat and store them, um, there is an option to haul away them partially treated um, to a commercial facility. Uh, and I think Mike and his staff have also looked at, um, um, I'm going to forget the name, the place was had a new little row, is it? Rose. Our options for that. So um, those, the trucking of biosolids will continue to occur over the life of the plant. As the flows goes up, the trucking will go up in proportion because it's just a fraction of what comes in goes out as solids for trucking. Okay. Yeah, certainly we uh, as a council have heard uh, some concern about the, the biosolid program, uh, although it is a MOE approved program in the agricultural area. And, um, and, uh, and in fact, it actually contributes to the agricultural economic health of uh, some farms in our community. So it's, uh, there is a positive spin to it. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is trucking and it is uh, uh, certainly noticeable by residents that we see that happen. Um, it's also notable that this style of, of facility uh, can have events, like you, like you suggest, where there's high inflow of, uh, of storm water or so on that can cause, uh, you know, a, basically an overflow of, of the amount of waste that does need to be trucked away to safely prevent spillage into the environment. So it's, it's the right thing to do, even though, you know, we don't want to see trucking, we want to be able to handle it in the plant. So I appreciate what you're saying, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you. Has anybody else got any questions or comments on this report? All right. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Jeff, for hanging out and uh, answering some questions with us. Council, you've heard the motion. Uh, I'm prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you very much. Sorry to keep you waiting, Jeff. Thank you to the, for the clerk for uh, pointing that out. We're going to go right back up to item 11.1, ward reports. I'm just going to look at my councillors and ask who has anything they'd like to mention. Is there anything you'd like to bring up? Any any comments? Go ahead, Doug. Uh, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I, I know it's been a long night, uh, folks. But uh, uh, so on October the sixteenth, I uh, uh, took part in Kenneth's Walk, which is, was held at the Duntroon Golf and Country Club. It was a fundraiser in memory of Kenneth McAlpine. And for those of you that don't know who Kenneth was, he was part of Team Giver. And he and Ryan Les Chappelle were they were contestants in the Amazing Race Canada about three years ago, and they came in second. And tragically, Kenneth lost his life uh, two years ago while pursuing one of his uh, passions, which was uh, hiking in the in the Rockies. So at Kenneth's walk, there were about 150 participants, and we walked from hole to hole. And at each hole, there was uh, food and drinks, and uh, quite good drinks actually. Uh, yeah, very good drinks. The, uh, the enter and there was entertainment, excellent entertainment. Uh, there were games, there was silent auction and uh, dinner, and we raised over $30,000, well over $30,000. All that money's gonna be spent in the community. Uh, the funds are used to uh, introduce uh, local children to, to uh, skiing. Uh, and uh, what it is, is uh, children in need that, uh, so basically they will be taken from, uh, you know, given lessons, outfitted with skis, outfitted with uh, clothes if they need it, given transportation, given lunch. So it's not, they're not just getting a ski pass, say, go skiing for the day. So they'll be introduced to skiing. 
There will also be paying uh, tuition for young people to enroll in the uh, culinary arts because Kenneth was a chef. And I wanted to give a big shout out to Amanda Murray. Uh, she represented Clearview there. She worked uh, very hard on behalf of Clearview. And uh, uh, Martin Ridlow from the Duntroon Highlands Golf Course and Mac McAlpine, uh, Kenneth's father, both told me that Amanda is a keeper. So there you go, Terry Bashan, if you're listening, if you're not sleeping, uh, she's a keeper, Terry. So there you go. Uh, and she did a really good job. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKechnie. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Um, I would like to acknowledge also that that was part of uh, something that Amanda's been working on, the Taste of Clearview uh, event. And it was uh, one of the signature events of the Taste of Clearview tour. So uh, congratulations to her. Um, okay, I saw some cards there. Uh, Ms. Deneen and then Mr. Patterson. Go ahead, Phyllis. Just quickly, I just want to uh, welcome Adam Thornton to our Nottawa Hall board and thank him for volunteering. We really, really appreciate his efforts. He's going to be our new booking uh, agent. So we really appreciate that. That's enough. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Phyllis. I look forward to that. He'll do a good job. Uh, Tom, you had something? Yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, uh, senior staff, uh, John, uh, Sasha, uh, who else might have been involved, Kelly, um, arranging the, uh, uh, I think they're in the process now of arranging for the NBCA to come and make a budget presentation Good. to us. Uh, I think it's probably at the second budget meeting, 29th, okay. is it? And then, and then also there are some topics that should be discussed at the staff level before coming back to council. The net gains, um, core non-core program support, you know, discussions about the levy, that sort of thing is going around. So I, th I think there's also going to be a meeting of the minds of the two staff groups before they come back to council with some thoughts. So I uh, appreciate the effort and uh, thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much, Councillor. Looking to other councillors, nothing further? All right, I'll just give uh, one quick shout out. Uh, I want to acknowledge the fine folks at Friends Pub in downtown Stainer. 10th anniversary uh, celebration put on by Diane McEachern and her staff. Congratulations on their uh, ongoing effort to battle COVID-19 by being open when we need them. You know, these uh, folks that work in the uh, food industry are essential workers and uh, we appreciate them every day. So it was a great uh, event uh, held in Stainer on the uh, on the grounds right across the street from this township office. So it was a really good event and really happy that I was uh, able to participate and great to see people come out and, uh, and, and uh, support her in a safe, COVID safe way, as well as a good community way. So it was kind of a refreshing moment to, to see us all behaving ourselves quite well in this COVID world. All right, uh, that's it for uh, ward reports at this, unless there's anybody else. Good, all right, well, we'll straight to uh, Councillor Patterson, you've got a report here. Uh, I'll read the recommendation. I'll go with you as the, as the mover, and then we'll call for a seconder. Recommendation be it resolved, Council of the Township, here we hereby one, receive report COU 003, 2021, County Road 9, posted speed reduction. And item two, authorize the mayor and deputy mayor to seek county council's approval to reduce the speed on County Road 9 in the sections currently posted as 80 kilometers per hour, to 60 kilometers per hour from County Road 124, Maple Valley to County Road 42, Cashtown Corners. And item three, that a copy of the approved resolution be sent to the county of Simcoe. So, Mr. Patterson, you'll be the mover. Councillor Lamers will show as the seconder. Mr. So Lamers, I, you... go ahead. Go so, on. I so move and uh, really to, to get cut right through it, this is a natural follow up. It's a follow-up that the council uh, uh, expressed interest in from our TAS uh, report on October the 5th. And uh, really, there's no need, uh, my, my feeling, no need to go into the background and the material. I, I provided it um, as an assist to the mayor and the deputy mayor and, uh, and for anyone in county council that wants to get a quick review of what we did. And, uh, and if uh, they ask you know, how we did it, it's there. And uh, I left it broad, Maple Valley to cash down corners to just to give as much option for the county to consider. And, uh, and like I said, if, uh, if it serves the purpose of the mayor and the deputy mayor as they go forward and uh, ask for support to, uh, uh, to approve the app, uh, resolution. Okay, has anybody got any questions to Councillor Patterson or comments? 
All right. I don't want to delay this, but I do want to give Councillor Patterson and members of council something to consider. Um, at County Council, uh, we have had some success in making some speed changes, uh, speaking from the County Council point of view. Uh, certainly, Essa Township, um, Romera, Oramadani, Clearview, we had had some re reductions in areas of the county roads. Uh, all of those reductions, though, uh, this term of council have been based on extensions of current reductions. So in the example of Clearview, the uh, Duntroon East section was uh, extending the 50K zone, an additional, Doug, was it a kilometer and a half or something like that, or a kilometer down the road? Uh, something like, I've forgotten the exact number, but it's in that neighborhood. Um, and so that was successfully passed. Uh, just to be clear, it was these motions never pass at County Council unanimously. Uh, so it is going to be a bit of a challenge to present this motion as Councillor Patterson has presented it. It's a little more extensive uh, motion than, uh, than what uh, County Council has been doing of recent, uh, but I'm optimistic and uh, I will you know, follow Council's wishes and take this forward uh, if this motion passes. Um, so Mr. Patterson, I'm sure you want to comment, go ahead. No, I'm very mindful of that. I'm, I'm glad you said it. And uh, it, is, it is a bit of a challenge, but I think the same thing could be said about Clearview Council about two years ago. And I, and oh, I think the, pro, for sure. the, thing that, the thing that I was most impressed with, other than the result, uh, was the thoroughness that our staff and the consultant went through. And I, and I really thought it brought a real um, accountable framework to the decision making. That's all we're asking of the county council and the county staff to do, to take a look yeah. at look at the process and look at the roads and that's all we can ask. So uh, we're, we've got your backs, you two, <laughs> if it is approved. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll let council decide here in a moment. But uh, again, the reason I made those comments was I just wanted to caution members of council and uh, so that they understood that county council, uh, the, these decisions are not easily uh, suaded. Deputy Mayor, would you agree? They're, they're not easily pitched. Absolutely. They're always a challenge. We've had some successes, but they're always a challenge. So, yeah. So, okay. All right. Anything further? Seeing none, I'm prepared to call the motion. Members of Council, all those in favor? And that carries. Thank you very much. All right. So, Madam Clerk, if you could prepare that information and send it off to the county clerk. And uh, if you could advise the deputy mayor and myself of that so that we then know where the process will be at county. Yes, go ahead, Sasha. Thank you, Mayor Measures for you to the rest of council. I'll also CC council on oh, that email with the letter so everyone's aware. Of the yeah, of course. I just wanna make sure that Barry and I know when that's happening. All right, thank you everybody. We're gonna move over to legislative services. Now we're gonna go right back to our clerk because she has some interesting news for the community to hear about our county council meeting schedules. Recommendation to receive report LS 017-2021. It's the 2022 council meeting schedule dated October 25, 2021. And item two, approve the 2021 council meeting schedule as presented and attach the schedule A to this report. Okay, move and second around this. Mr. Broderick, seconded. Mr. Walker, thank you. Madam Clerk, please go right ahead. Thank you, Mayor Measures. Um, this is actually Deputy Clerk Brenda Falls's report. But oh, this portion good for her. Report, Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if Brenda wants to turn her turn her um, her video on and microphone on, but this portion of the report is something that we both um, proposed. So if you look, we've added some additional meeting dates um, monthly in the schedule that's attached to Schedule A. And you notice that they're identified as planning public meetings with an asterisk. Um, within the report under comments and analysis, um, we advise why we're proposing this to council. And I think tonight's meeting is, is a perfect example of why we're doing so. Um, we just noticed that there's been a significant increase in um, planning public meetings that the township facilitates, which is great. Um, and these types of meetings, we're expecting that they'll increase as development increases over the next couple of years. So kind of to assist with the meeting durations, the clerk's department has proposed that, proposed that we add an additional council meeting date on the fourth Wednesday of each month. And these are solely reserved to deal with planning, statutory planning public meetings. They're still considered a meeting of council, a special meeting of council. 
They would start at 6.30 p.m. So we'll be removing the planning public meetings from our regular meetings. And that way, um, planning staff doesn't have to attend our regular meetings for a planning public meeting. They can just attend this meeting. And other staff members don't have to be present for our planning public meetings as well. There is a caveat that we can still um, have planning public meetings during a regular session if timeframes don't work out. We see this maybe happening once in a blue moon, um, but there is still the option if we have to move forward an application that a regular meeting can still be used for that, that item. Um, and that might be seen kind of later in the year because as we get into the fall of next year, we get into the um, municipal and school board election, um, we may have to, to add some planning public meetings for the regular sessions. But this is something that we wanna proceed forward with in future years, and I think it'll, it'll work well. Does the council, any questions to the clerk or clerks? Yes, go ahead, Tom. So does this, um, so uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we, in effect, we still have a motion outstanding. We do. We were, we were looking at committee of the whole and that sort of thing. So are we refreshing that? I, I don't disagree with this, but uh, um, there's other ways of making our, 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 our township now a bit more efficient as well. So just curious. Um, Madam Clerk or Brenda? I, I can speak to that, Mayor Measures, sure. for you to Councillor Patterson and the rest of Council. That's a great question that you have. And actually, the Clerk's Department has a report coming to Council, I, I believe, in November 22nd meeting to address that motion that was made about two years ago and how we want to proceed forward in this next last part of your term of Council and uh, address that Committee of the Whole recommendation. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much. All right. Anybody else with any questions? Uh, Brendick, thank you for putting this together since you're here on the on the call and thank you for staying up late with council. It is late night with council. Anyway, I uh, appreciate that everybody and uh, I, I also also really appreciate uh, Sasha taking a good look at how we conduct our business here and that uh, uh, holding these extra meetings uh, will actually uh, give us more efficiency. It also gives a little better predictability as to when public meetings, will be held, being that they will be on a Wednesday and they're only in the last Wednesday of the month. So for the planning department and for the general public, now we know when those meetings would be. So we never really know what the, uh, the way they is, the current system is, so thank you. Nothing further? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council, we've got a mover and second around the motion. I'm prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you. Well done. Okay. Guess what? Moving on to page five. Here we go. This is the bylaws section of the uh, meeting. Okay, bylaw 2103. It's the amending bylaw. This is an on desk uh, item. Recommendation be it resolved. The bylaw 21103 being a bylaw to amend the appointment bylaw number 1906. Being presented and read a first, second, and third time. Finally passed on the 25th day of October 2021. Move and second on the bylaw, please. Councillor Broderick, Deputy, or sorry, Councillor Broderick and Councillor McKechnie. Thank you. I'll, you've heard the bylaw. All those in favor? And the bylaw carries. Again, congratulations and thank you to Adam. Item number 21-104. Uh, it's the development charges bylaw number 19-36. Recommendation, be it resolved, that bylaw 21-104 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 1936 being the development charges bylaw, be presented and read a first, second, and third time, finally passed on this 25th day of October, 2021. Is there a mover and seconder on this bylaw? Mr. Lamers, Mr. McKechnie, Mr. Lamers, Mr. McKechnie, any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? And the bylaw carries. And 21106, stop up and close to Claire Surplus, part of Elm Street. Wow, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> it's even been longer tonight. Recommendation, be it resolved that bylaw 21106, being a bylaw to stop up and close to Claire Surplus and sell part of Elm Street, be presented at read a first, second, and third time, and finally pass on the 25th day of October 2021. And I have a mover and seconder on this important bylaw. Deneen and Walker, 
Any other Walker? Any questions? Seeing none, I'll call the bylaw. All those in favor? The bylaw carries. Outstanding. Getting some property cleaned up around the town. That's good. Uh, item 13, notice of motion. We have two items on here. I'd like to acknowledge Councillor Janine as a motion regarding the Clearview Stainer Food Bank, which we will discuss on the 8th. And also Councillor McKechnie has a bylaw, or sorry, as a motion regarding parking on concession 10 at County Road 124, also to be discussed on November 8th. Thank you for presenting those. This is the correct way to do this. Council, we're at item number 14. This is the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting. I will read this bylaw. Recommendation to be resolved bylaw 21 108, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the October 25, 2021 council meeting to be presented right at first, second, third time. Finally passed on the 25th of October 2021. Mover and seconder on this confirmatory. Deneen and McKechnie. Deneen and McKechnie. And I will call the bylaw. All those in favor? That carries unanimous. Uh, before I adjourn, I just want to acknowledge that I uh, hope that Connie is doing well. I'm sorry she didn't get a chance to rejoin us. And I will check in with her tomorrow afternoon. Deputy Mayor, after we're finished our very lengthy county council meeting. So there you go. Council, is anything further for the good of the township? Seeing none, congratulations. I'd like to ask for the motion to adjourn, recommendation be resolved. Council meeting be adjourned at 10, 19 p.m. Deneen and Lamers, thank you. All those in favor? Well done. Thank you to staff. Thank